First thing that we want to talk about when we discuss stout hearth safety is clearances. That's probably one of the most important things and often one of the more overlooked as far as installations are concerned. People's goal is generally heat, they get a hold of a stove, and they want to install it um, so that it's functional. But clearances aren't always accounted for. It's critical because obviously the stove is producing quite a bit of heat. The newer, the, the older stoves tended to throw a lot of heat up. So they didn't throw a lot of heat down, especially cold stoves, because of the way they were built. Older wood stoves that were less efficient did the same thing. They threw more heat up. You actually lost more heat through the pipe than you were getting into the room. As we improve the quality of stove design, one of the things that we improve is the percentage of heat that comes into the room versus what goes in other directions. As that improves, what it also means is that adjacent combustibles become much more important um, to address. And that's why the installation, per the manufacturer's specifications, is critical. We want to make sure that the stove has the proper clearance to adjacent combustibles, be it the wall, ceiling, um, and even adjacent furniture. It's also important that the pipe maintains a critical clearance all the way through the system. We have minimum requirements for how far the pipe can be from the wall, how far the box that supports the chimney can come in from the ceiling, has to come in from the ceiling. And then, of course, we have the hearth protection underneath the stove. The reason we need to worry about clearances is heat transfer. Heat comes off of the stove in two different ways, either radiant or convective. Radiant heat, of course, is radiation that comes off the stove in all directions, depending on the surface of the stove. Some stoves have brick on the side, so more heat comes off the top and the front. Some stoves are cast iron, so that they have a consistent distribution of heat all over the place. What we want to make sure is that anything that is adjacent to the stove, below the stove, above the stove, doesn't get so hot that it could actually reach combustion levels. Combustion temperatures on average for woods about 451 degrees Fahrenheit, but the ignition temperature can be considerably lower depending on the condition of the adjacent combustibles. So what we're worrying about is as the heat is radiating to the adjacent combustibles, if it's too close, what can happen is the properties of those combustibles can change. The wood will start to dry out, it'll start to break down, and as that happens, the ignition temperature lowers and lowers and lowers to the point where um, it could actually um, combust just from a flash heat from the stove. Underneath the stove, we also need to make sure what the makeup of the floor is. In this case, we have a tile floor, but we actually have wood underneath that tile. Because that's a concealed combustible, we need to be especially careful. That can happen in walls as well. If the wall happens to be made out of stone, at least on the surface, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a non-combustible wall. The rule of thumb, as far as combustibles are concerned, is it's either entirely non-combustible, so it's wood, it's stone, metal, something going all the way to the, from the interior to the exterior, or it's considered combustible. So even a, a wall that's next to the stove that has stone facing it, um, if there's wood on the outside of it, um, wood in the middle of the wall as far as the construction is concerned, that's still considered a combustible. It's important to understand what, com what we're talking about when we refer to combustibles. What we're talking about is anything within a certain distance from the stove um, generally, we're talking about wood that is either exposed or, in the case of the wood underneath the tile, um, that is concealed. So you've either got visible combustibles and you've got concealed combustibles. Um, concealed combustibles can be the most dangerous because they're concealed, because you can't see them. Heat transfers. It transfers through tile, transfers, transfers through brick, stone, metal, anything like that. And if you can't see the combustibles behind it, you may not know that their properties have changed to the point where they become more flammable. Wood, when it's exposed to a high temperature over a period of time, it dries out and then it starts to break down. Basically what's happening inside the wood stove is also happening just much slower to the combustible materials that you see near the stove. If you think of a, a piece of wood that you've seen lying out in the desert for a long time, it actually looks like it's been burned. It's actually just, it's the same thing that's been happening, it's just been happening very slowly. What's critical as that process happens is that the longer that time, the longer that combustible is exposed to uh, heat, the lower the ignition temperature becomes. And that's when we have real serious problems. We'll often have people say, well, it's been like this for a while. I don't see why it's a problem. What they don't understand is that over that period of time while it's been there, it's actually been changing and changing and changing. The ignition, ignition temperature has been dropping and dropping and dropping to the point where at some point a flash heat could actually ignite it. If it's concealed, if it's underneath the floor, if it's behind a stone wall, for instance, if you have wood stubs that are directly up against the stone,
um, that heat that's transferring through it, the ignition point is not where you're going to see it. By the time it lights, by the time it, a fire becomes uh, present, um, it's often too late. So the first thing that we want to discuss when we're talking about a hearth installation is the floor protection. The goal with the floor protection is to protect the combustible surfaces underneath the stove from the heat from the stove as well as the, as the embers and logs um, within the stove. A basic hearth protection, usually for older stoves and some newer, taller stoves, will be listed as just ember protection. Ember protection simply means that it is a piece of sheet metal, stone, tile, something non-combustible that's placed under the stove, whose direct goal is that when you're servicing the stove, either adding wood to the stove or cleaning the stove, if embers or logs or anything combustible falls out of the stove, it doesn't land directly on the combustible surface. Most modern appliances, because of the amount of heat that they drive into the room versus older, less efficient stoves, now require thermal protection underneath the stove. So the hearth pad that's underneath isn't just non-combustible, it actually has some insular value to it. A lot of hearth pads that you see that are pre-manufactured actually are layered so they'll have tile or stone on the top and then they'll have some type of insular material underneath it. In the case of this, we have sheet metal that's actually jacketed around an insulating panel that's underneath it. Hearth pads are described in two different ways in owner's manuals for stoves. One is non-combustible and the other is insular. Regardless of whether it's non-combustible or insular in its requirement, whether it's required to be non-combustible or insular, um, we do still need a hearth pad. Because we're sitting on a tile floor, although the tile floor, it's the tile itself is non-combustible, we still need to have hearth protection here because this particular stove requires thermal protection underneath the stove. So what we have is the stove sitting on top of an insulated hearth pad to help protect the combustible materials that are actually beneath the tile. The better design the stove is as far as combustion is concerned, the more heat they're going to retain in the firebox, which also means the more heat that gets radiated down. Wood stoves, even more so than coal stoves, are going to be an issue because much of the combustion design happens in the top of the stove. We have glass doors, and that heat is actually reflected down in front of the stove. And that can make the place where stoves actually fail the most from safety is right in front of the stove on the hearth. And that's one of the reasons that we have a hearth pad as large as it looks. When, a, when an insulated hearth pad is required, it's important to note what surface we're putting our, our stove on. In this case, we have a tile floor. While a tile, while a tile floor is non-combustible, it's very important to know what's underneath the tile. And in most cases, it's going to be wood. Um, because the tile is not insular, the heat will eventually radiate through that tile and you can actually have what we call a concealed combustible, which can be very dangerous. Concealed combustibles, you don't see the change in the material. You don't see the indicators that too much heat is applying to that surface area. So by the time it becomes a major problem, um, it's too late. Uh, by, the, sorry, by the time we can see that it's a major problem, it's too late. It's very important that we maintain the clearances from the stove to the wall based on the rating plate. Most newer stoves built after 1989 will have a plate on the back of the stove that tells you what the manufacturer's recommended clearances are. One thing that's important when you see those clearances, you cannot make up a clearance by combining a couple of different clearances. So for instance, if they don't tell you what a corner clearance is, you can't just kind of guess. You do have to go back to the owner's manual and we can show some links on how to find manuals for a lot of stoves that are manufactured up until today. When we talk about clearances to a hearth product, whether it be the pipe or the stove, we're talking about the clear air space between the appliance and the nearest adjacent combustible or the nearest surface that you come to, regardless of what the surface may be. So after we've made sure that we have proper hearth protection underneath the stove, we need to take a look at the overall installation because clearances to the adjacent combustibles are just as important as the combustible floor underneath. Clearances to a stove come in two forms. We have the clearances that are determined by a manufacturer and then what we have what are called NFPA 211 default. Default clearances are only used when we don't have what's called a rating plate, which is usually found on the back of the stove or on a chain underneath the stove, 
that actually tells us what the manufacturer has tested to be safe clearances to combustibles. As with hearth protection underneath, what we're talking about is adjacent to combustibles. That can be either a visible combustibles, as you can see here, or it could be concealed combustibles. So combustibles are actually behind stone tile or something like that on the wall. Stove manufacturers are first going to present you with a set of basic hearth clearances. These would be clearances to the side of the stove, to the rear of the stove, and corner clearances in the case of an installation like this. It's often possible to reduce those clearances a little bit as long as you follow the manufacturer's specifications. This is done by putting up wall shields. A wall shield is a non-combustible surface that spays one inch off the wall and it has airflow behind it. The material that the wall shield itself is made out of can vary. It can be stone, it can be tile, it can be brick, it can be a combination of non-combustible materials. Acceptable clearances uh, to combustibles are going to be uh, at or a little bit above the boiling temperature. Because of that, the surfaces are going to be fairly warm to the touch. That doesn't mean that they're unsafe. Um, it is important to take a look at those surfaces and make sure that they haven't shown any reactions to the heat, such as grazing of the paint, excessive drying of the wood, things like that. If you do have a concern, always go back to the manufacturer's owner's manual or you can contact the manufacturer themselves just to confirm that you've actually used the proper clearances. In certain installations, you may find that the clearance requirements for the pipe, being 18 inches from a single wall pipe, may actually exceed the clearance requirements for the stove itself. Check with the manufacturer or with the owner's manual to see if they've allowed for clearance reduction. That can be done generally using either a pipe heat shield, which is a piece of non-combustible material, usually sheet metal, that's spaced one inch off the pipe and allowing airflow between the pipe and the heat shield. We also have the option of what's called double wall or close clearance pipe. Double wall pipe is a stainless steel interior. It actually has two layers similar to chimney and it has clearances as close as six inches to combustibles. So to sum up, when taking a look at a hearth installation, whether it's a new installation or existing installation, the first and most important thing to address is clearances. Making sure that we have proper hearth protection, making sure that we have proper clearances from the stove as specified by the manufacturer, and making sure that the clearances from the pipe, whether it be single wall, shielded pipe, or double wall pipe, is properly addressed. It's also important to note that the three are independent. Just because you met the clearances from the stove to adjacent combustibles doesn't necessarily mean that you met the proper clearances from the pipe to adjacent combustibles. If you have any questions, make sure you check the owner's manual, the rating plate that's provided with the stove, or your local arms professional.